In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at drawing a classical subject matter, folds of fabric. Hello there everyone, Matt here with virtualinstructor.com and in this lesson we're going to take a look at drawing folds of fabric or folded cloth or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to be using pastel pencils for this demonstration but really you can use any drawing or painting media that you wish because the concepts that we cover can be applied to any drawing or painting media. Now if you're brand new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click on that notification bell so you're notified when we upload new drawing and painting lessons here to this channel. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a like too, that'll definitely help us out as well. And if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, then I encourage you to check out our membership program. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. And if you want to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, there's also going to be a link in the description below this video. You can check that out as well. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to be working on pastel matte paper, which has a very fine but heavy tooth associated with it. It's almost like fine grit sandpaper. I'm going to be using the dark gray surface for this particular demonstration. I'm also going to be using Carbothello pastel pencils. These pencils are a little bit harder than some of the pastel pencils out there, but they keep a nice sharp tip and give you lots of control. We're only going to be using a few colors, believe it or not. We're going to use a couple of red oranges. One red orange is a little bit more red than the other, and one's a little bit more orange than the other. A peach color, a cream color, a dark, cool gray, black, a goldenish yellow orange, and also a darker red purple. And that's it. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the keys to success and then get into this demonstration. Now, obviously, folded fabric is a classical subject and it may seem very difficult on the surface, but we're gonna take a structured approach here. The first thing that we need to consider, and this is gonna be one of our keys to success, obviously, is to find the contour lines. Now, these contour lines aren't very obvious here, but we can look for them by looking at areas of contrast and value. These are areas where we see a dark value nestled right next to a lighter value. We're gonna start by making these initial marks on our drawing paper. Paper. After that, we're going to start considering the value or the darkness or lightness of the colors that we see. The lighter values are going to be found where the fold comes towards the viewer, so any area that protrudes is generally going to be lighter in value. The opposite of this is true. Any area that recedes is clearly going to be darker in value. In this relationship of light, dark value, and the transition areas that happen between will eventually lead to the illusion of these folds. Now, if you have trouble seeing these values, you might try squinting your eyes. When you squint your eyes, you remove all those edges of strong contrast and instead only see the shapes of value, or you at least see them a little bit easier. Now, as we develop these values, we're also gonna be considering the directional stroke making or the direction that we pull the pencil when we're making marks. Directional strokes, of course, help to create the illusion of form and texture as well, so we're going to try to make these marks flow along the form of each one of the folds. Here are a few arrows that I've added over the top of the drawing to give you an indication of what directional strokes I made through this process. Now, we'll start by developing the values, of course, and we can use some hatching and cross-hatching and some less directional strokes initially, but then when we get to the point where we're starting to basically layer our last applications, that's when we really need to start thinking about the directional stroke making. We'll begin by sketching the contour lines here on gray pastel matte paper using a light, cool gray pastel pencil. I'm using this pencil simply because it provides enough contrast against the darker gray background so that I can see the marks. But I know that when I apply pastel applications over the top, these marks will dissolve and disappear. At this point, I'm just concentrating on the contrast and value. You can see that these lines are loose and sketchy. Once I have some of the larger shapes in place, I can go back at this point and refine some of the details. Now, this of course is a very general statement since my marks are still very loose and sketchy. This first pass with the pastel pencil, of course, allows us to become a little bit more familiar with the subject. And now we're ready to start applying the actual colors and, of course, developing the value and the value relationships. 
I'm going to start here by trying to figure out a formula or a process that I can go through uh, by layering my pencils so that it's repeatable. So you can see here I've started with a one of the red oranges that we're using. This is the red orange that's a little bit more red. And then over the top, I'm using this peach pastel pencil to define some of the areas of highlight. At this point, I'm focusing mainly on the shapes of lighter value, middle value, and darker value that I see. Now I'm going back with a cream pencil and adding a little bit of warmth to these highlighted areas. Again, at this point, I'm just trying to figure out my formula for developing the colors that I see in the reference. Now I've chosen to use a dark cool gray here for some of the shadowed areas. You can see that with the initial applications, the value is too dark and a little too strong. We'll fix that in a moment. We'll go ahead and define the areas of darker value for this initial shape. And now I'm just going to go ahead and add just a touch of black here with a very light touch. Now clearly the values are too dark and we need to adjust them. So now I'm using another red orange. This is the red orange that's a little bit more orange. You'll see I use these two pencils interchangeably. They're very similar. But by going over the top of the applications we have in place, a couple of things happen. One, we create gradations of dark to light, and we smooth out those transitions between the different shapes of value. We also make a more convincing illusion of texture here by going over the top of these areas, and we also mute the value. Now you can see I'm using kind of a golden yellow here to make the highlight a little bit more to what we see in the reference. And I'm pretty happy with this combination of colors. So we're basically using just a few colors here. We're using a couple of red oranges, a golden yellow as we see here, a cream, a peach, a dark cool gray, and a black. You can see I'm repeating these same colors in the next section. And here again, I see that this combination of colors is working well for this particular piece. Of course, I can always go back and make adjustments, making areas darker or even lighter if I need to. Here you can see what a great job the pastel pencils do on their own for blending and creating transitions of tone and value. No blending stomp or smudging is necessary. Now we'll just simply continue on to the next section, repeating the same combination of colors. Now clearly you can see I'm taking this drawing a section at a time. This image of course seems a little bit complex on the surface but if we break it down into digestible chunks like we are here it seems a lot more manageable this approach of course allows me to have small wins along the way now you can see at this point i've decided to go back and add an additional color this is a red purple and i've decided to add it in some of the areas of darker darker middle value and also in some of the shadowed areas this will add just a little bit more interest to the to the image and of course add a little bit more pop of color. Now this red purple of course is a little bit cooler than the red orange so it's appropriate to use in some of those shadowed areas. Now at this point for the most part I have my process down. I know what order of colors that I want to add to create the desired effect. Every once in a while here, especially in this time lapse, you can see a few grays pop in. And that's because I was still experimenting a little bit with some of the neutral colors to mute some of the colors and also make them a little bit darker. But as I progress through the process, I find that the darker cool gray that I used initially and the black do a fine job of this, especially when I'm layering over the top with some of the red oranges. Again, for this particular subject, it's simply establishing the shape first with a base application of red-orange, then establishing the highlights, then adding a little bit of warmth, and then after that, pushing the contrast in value. Now, as we discussed, directional stroke making is clearly important in creating the illusion of form and also the illusion of texture. Here you can see initially the marks that I make uh, really don't follow the, the form of the subject. I do a lot of cross hatching initially, and I'm just basically trying to get material on the surface in the appropriate locations. 
But as I start to make the final layers, the final applications, as you can see here with the red orange, I'm trying to think about the directional strokes that I make. And I'm trying to make sure that these directional strokes flow along the form of each section of the fabric, obviously. This, of course, will create the illusion of form, but also help to create the illusion of texture as well. So directional stroke making is incredibly important, but you can see in the early stages, I'm not really thinking about it too much. I am to a certain degree, but it's really those final applications where your directional stroke making is most important. All right, at this point, you can see all we need to do is just continue working our way uh, across the picture plane. And in this case, I'm working my way, of course, down and to the right, trying to keep the palm of my hand out of the way. Now, obviously, I'm doing this because I'm right-handed, as I mentioned before. If you're left-handed, you might consider working from the upper right-hand corner and progressively working your way down the picture plane and slowly to the lower left-hand corner. Drawing folded fabric like this is really not that dissimilar from drawing anything else that you might draw from observation, obviously. It's clearly about understanding the relationships of values because value, the darkness or lightness of a color is how we understand the form of objects. It's how we understand the light within the scene, the texture, value is so incredibly important. And in this particular case, you can see how important that value is. And this is true of every drawing that you create. If you pay close attention to the values on your subject and try to replicate the shapes of value that you see and the value relationships, then normally you'll end up with a drawing that's fairly re representational. Here you can see we've got some darker values in the lower left-hand corner, and this shape is rather large. This, of course, is another good area to see how I'm starting with cross hatching, but then as I start to progress to some of those final layered applications, I start to think about the directional stroke making. You'll also notice that throughout the process, my pencils have gradually gotten a lot smaller. That is, of course, due partially to the texture of the paper. This pastel matte paper, of course, is almost like sandpaper. So it really does a number on the tips of your pencil and the pastel pencil material itself, but that's fine. Of course, these pastel pencils are fairly soft and they're being used as they're intended. Now I should point out that you should be patient in this process, of course. You should be patient with any drawing or painting that you create. It's often a misunderstanding on the part of folks who are new to drawing and painting to think that works of art are easily created by people who have developed their drawing and painting skills. And this isn't necessarily true. Nothing really comes easy, no matter how skilled you are as an artist. It does require your full attention and there are, there are challenges inherent in every subject, no matter what your skill level. So as you develop as an artist and your skill level increases, you still have those same type of challenges and your expectations for yourself as an artist rise as your skill level also increases. So keep that in mind. So if you feel like creating a drawing like this should be easy and not require your full brain power, then you're mistaken. Because no matter what skill level you're at, you're still going to need to put all of your attention into this. And you're also going to need to take your time. This drawing took well over five hours to create. And compared to most of the drawings that I create, five hours is actually a little bit of a shorter time frame. So be prepared to put some work into this and take your time and allow your drawing to develop. Don't don't feel like your drawing should develop in a very quick period of time. Allow yourself some time and allow yourself to put all of your attention into it when you're creating. And of course, take breaks along the way. This drawing was created over the course of several days. So I also didn't create this drawing in one sitting either. Now, as we work to the last section of the drawing, I should also point out that this process is possible because of the nature of pastel pencils. Now, obviously, the material or medium that you use to create a drawing or painting is going to affect the process that you take. With pastel pencils, we can layer over the top of applications we already have in place, just like with opaque painting media. Of course, pastel pencils blend very easily, as we can see here. So the actual nature of the medium makes a huge difference in how you approach the subject that you're trying to capture. 
Now at this point, I'm using my red orange. You can see how very little is left of the pencil at this point to make some final adjustments and refinements before pulling off the tape from the paper. And now our pastel pencil drawing of some folded fabric is now complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's a link in the description below. Now, if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, then I suggest you check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subjects and media weekly live lessons which are broadcast live and then recorded and stored in our vaults you can go back to all of our recorded live lessons which go back all the way to 2012 weekly critiques as part of the members minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers there's a link in the description below you can check that out everyone starts off with a free trial for seven days so you can check it out and see if the program's right for you thanks again for watching this video and as always i wish you all the very best in your artistic success